Well, welcome back to another episode of the Buffalo Happy Hour. Mike, what's up, dude? We're back in the space. Dude. It's totally different. So, for those of you that don't know, we literally just built what you see in the last two weeks with the help of Mr. V. And that's all we're going to say uh, to keep his identity secret. But this is so different, so much better. And everything now is streamlined and it's perfect. It's exactly the way we want it. It's crazy how much bigger this space is. Yeah, we gained, what was it, over three feet? Yeah, over three feet just this way. But then you got all this too. So we gained like 40 square feet. It's hard to fathom what this was and what it is now. Because, okay, think about think about it. When you and I first started thinking that we needed a new studio space, we went looking to rent a place. And we went to a place around the corner from me that the room was probably no bigger than this. Maybe right. like 20 square feet bigger. We don't need that much room. This is perfect. Correct. Yep. I am stoked. And we got, we got room in a corner for something big. Mm-hmm. Which we won't talk about. Hell yeah. Garbage can right here for empties. And this is it. What's up, roomie? I hope everybody can hear that it sounds better, too. Because we have ceiling tiles above us. It's all acoustic paneling. We have acoustic paneling on the wall here, behind me over on this side, behind Mike over there, and behind Mike right next to the flag. We're just... Got carpet. These shoes are coming off. Yeah. We're just chilling, bro. It's so much different. This is an actual room. Um, Our table's dead nut center in the middle. We have lights everywhere. We have plants and air fresheners. (laughs) It's heated. I mean, the whole thing is different. So this is going to be a clip. So explain to the people what it was like before when we first got here. Okay. So we are in a garage, and the garage had a half-finished section that the previous homeowner used as like a quote-unquote tool room, not insulated, um, fully exposed ceiling, and or like right to the roof. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing. There was no door. Um, It was just kind of like an open wall to get into this area. So we essentially looked at the space and said, let's flip it. And it went from, we'll just insulate the ceiling and be done to we're going to frame and build a wall. Well, we're going to add a door. We're going to make a actual studio the way that it should be with all the acoustic paneling, the works to make sure that first of all, we're warm. Second of all, we're going to be sweating Mm -hmm. in winter and in summer. And then third, we have the better, like the best possible sound, and we can fix lighting issues. We can fix the walls because it was just straight white walls all over the place in one window. Yeah. The the outlet covers didn't fill all the holes. Mm-hmm. It was just a mess, and we're like, screw it, we're just going all in. So we did. We painted the walls a dark blue, a dark gray. We got acoustic paneling. We added a drop ceiling. We added four different lights. Um, hours worth of research on color schemes what kind of paint to use should we use paint primer mix should we prime then paint um what kind of insulation should we use and then we just went to town and and got to work basically in what is probably the worst year to ever Mm -hmm. do a construction project (laughs) we went all in um just based on pricing of supplies but we added insulation above the ceiling inside the wall that we built framed in a door and mind you, we had no clue how to do anything, and we made it work. So we got curtains for the, the window to block out light, but it also insulates. We have an infrared heater that we weren't applying correctly right. for the last year and a half. So now this thing is literally going to get us real toasty. We put um, we cleaned the floor after we did all the demo dirty work, and then we put in a loose lay pad and carpet. Added everything onto the walls, threw some shelves in the corner. I mean, we, we still got the American flag. We still got the whiskey review board. And we kind of tied everything in from season one and two. And then we're just rolling through seasons three through five. And it's just unbelievable what's happening. It's crazy. So I'll throw some B-roll footage over this. But basically, as soon as you walk into my garage, it was just open. There was nothing there before we built the wall. Yeah. 
is you pan to the right and that's the actual side of the garage right over here. And then as you come back, that was the space that we had to record, but it was behind a curtain. So we weren't, we didn't have that much space. And now it's just, like you said, just completely turned around. It's a total 180 and it's so warm in here. And now, now, I mean, we got our, uh, our welcome mat Mm -hmm. with like a, a plastic thing. For shoes, whatever the hell that called. What is that thing called? A tray, like a yeah, like a shoe tray, yeah. basically. Did you know? It's what I got in my basement. For those that have been in my basement, and then uh, slippers are going to be here permanently. And it's, I mean, everything's I mean, waterproof. Everything's insulated. And we said the hell with it. We're not going to make someone else rich. We're mm-hmm. going to make the best of what we have. And we totally renovated the space and made it ours. And the American dream is still alive. Hell yeah. So behind me, we have our Stave and Thief Society book, obviously. We have to rep that because we are whiskey stewards, so we have to have that. We also have some three-cord on the second shelf, and then we just wanted to fill out the shelf with other whiskeys that we enjoy drinking. Um, but also keep in mind that this is still outside and it's not my bar, so I want to keep my favorite whiskeys still at my bar. Uh, so some of these are empty, but we will be filling them out with ones that are full as we continue growing. On Mike's side, we have the Devil's River, beautiful case of their distiller select, the 13 Monkeys whiskey right up there on that second shelf as well. Uh, Up on the top shelf with the light, we have the Buffalo Happy Hour podcast cocktail book, which my sister gave us for uh, Christmas that has all of our cocktail recipes in it. And then just going right down, just all the whiskeys that we enjoy drinking that we've had on the podcast before. And it's just, it's so much better in here and it feels comfortable in here. I could record like a four hour podcast in here. Yeah. I kind of don't want to leave. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, a, a pain and a disappointment that there's <laughs> actual things that I have to do after recording this. And I'm <laughs> fairly upset, but yeah, I, it's just, it's such a sigh of relief that this is done. I'm dude, the, the cameras, the lights are permanently bracketed into the ceiling and the actual roof of the garage that drop through the insulation, drop through the ceiling tiles, and then just are there. I'm it's just so much better. Mm-hmm. Everything about it is better. And that's it. Now I don't know. Now we'll just keep grinding and just keep going to work and and that's it. And just see what, what happens. We did all this for the four viewers that are watching on YouTube. Yeah. So thank you for sticking around for like three weeks because the uh, we appreciate the support for all four of you. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you some information that you're probably not going to be happy with around the number of subscribers that we have and how many are actually coming from people that aren't subscribed. Perfect. Which doesn't make any sense to me. Let me, let me take a guess. We're just over 290 subs. Yep. Um, and our audio only platforms are doing well. Correct. Okay. So let's hear it. So for YouTube, since we started this YouTube channel two almost two years ago, 40% of the people that are watching these videos are subscribed. That means 60% of the people that are not subscribed are watching our videos. So if you are watching our videos and you're not subscribed yet, just hit that subscribe button down below. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps our channel grow. And 60% of you are not subscribed. So please subscribe. Please. Honestly, it doesn't hurt anything. Yeah, no. It just supports us. So we appreciate it. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. So we have a mysterious clear liquid in a Glen Karen, and you've never told me what we're drinking. Yeah, I mean, and you hid the bottle from me too. It's not 15 minutes yet. So do you want to try it or do you want to wait until the 15 minute? I mark? have to wait for the 15 minute mark, Okay, but I at least want to know what it is because I mean, it's, I mean, it's a decent pour. And if it's like gin or vodka, no, it's not. Okay. It's, it's a corn product. A corn product that looks like water. Yeah. Legitimately looks like, look at, it literally looks like water. It's whiskey. Uh Uh-huh. I'll tell you that. It's whiskey. All right. What's its proof? 60. 60 ABV? Mm -hmm. So its proof is? No, 60 60 proof. So it's 30 30 ABV. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's a whiskey. It's not whiskey. Because you can't legally call it whiskey because it's not 80 proof. Right. But it is a whiskey flavor. 
just chill out. We'll get to it. All right. So what's going on, man? No, uh, I watched Saturday Night Live for the first time in a very long time last night. With Elon? Yeah. I Did you watch it? Or no. no. I f- honestly uh, have like no interest in watching SNL. Me either. And I hate SNL. Yeah. SNL is they took these past four years – under President Trump, and they made their entire show about that. Right. And it was annoying. Yeah. I try to get into it because I love comedy, but no one on there I like. The only person that I like is Keenan Thompson, which I still don't understand why that is the only thing that he's doing. He's such a talented comedian. He needs to do something too. else. I wanted that too. I, I don't understand. But anyway, so I don't really like watching SNL at all. But with Elon on, I love Elon. He's just a cool, down-to-earth dude. He's an alien. Yeah. And – the thing that interests me a lot is that he's not a comedian. Right. So what is this guy going to do? He's not an actor. He's not a comedian. He is a businessman. How'd it go? It was super funny. Was it really? Yeah. Like, I'm sitting there and I'm watching this, and I'm watching Elon perform and, like, do all of these skits, and I'm like, I really should start watching this again. And then they get into some political jokes, and I'm like, this just isn't even funny. They had two political jokes last night, which is why I liked it so much because it wasn't heavily political. Yeah, it wasn't ninety eight percent political. No, last night it was right. Yeah, it was amazing. It was basically all about cryptocurrency and why Elon Musk is pushing Do- Dogecoin, Dodgecoin, even though it's not a real thing. So it was super funny. But th- they had two political jokes. One was about like a white supremacist um, Twitter or a white supremacist book reading or whatever. And then they zoomed out and they're like, oh, it was President Trump, not some random person. I'm like, shut up. This is stupid. And they had another skit about how Joe Biden is actually a wax figure, which it's kind of funny. But it's not original. Those two jokes were not original at all. But the whole other part of it was just Elon Musk being an awkward human because mm-hmm. he is an awkward human. And it just made the whole thing so much funnier. I do recommend watching it. Okay. But did you ever watch the show? Yeah, um, not religiously, but it was on growing up, and my wife is super into it. Recently, she hasn't been for the same reason. She she doesn't want to get immersed in politics. She just wants to escape it, which is why she liked SNL in the first place, and right. then they flipped their tide. Um, but there's a ton of famous skits that I reference a lot from SNL, like old SNL, mm-hmm. and some of my favorite people in Hollywood – started in SNL. So I like to kind of keep up with them and everything like that, but sure. it's not it's not like, oh my God, it's Saturday night. Yeah. You know? I was never able to stay up and watch it on Saturday night anyway. That was the other it started at midnight. <laughs> yeah. That was the other thing. So yeah, I watched it yesterday on Sunday. But it was it was honestly really good. I didn't know that Elon Musk had Asperger's. He, I mean, he announced I mean, that last night. It makes sense. Yeah. Dude is a genius. Right. And it was kind of cool because it was Mellor's Day, so they tied in the mothers. Elon Musk's mother came out. She's just as awkward as he is. But really? Yeah, she's – I mean, they're South African. Like, they don't know our culture. Right. And he has Asperger's, and he was talking, like, the whole time on how he's just a weird dude. Like, he was mocking himself, which was so funny. Mm-hmm. You, you should watch it. It was pretty good. There's an email that is public record that he sent to all of Tesla, and it basically just outlines – his vision, uh, their mission in regards to production, mm. how they're going to attain the goals that are just basically nuts. And he uh, he ends the email with saying, we're burning the midnight oil to burn the midnight oil. And it's just such a fat – because when you work there and you're in upper management, it is beyond stressful, mm. especially if you're not meeting weekly goals or like shift goals for production. It's it's a, just a very – high intense environment, high True. stress environment in general. However, it's funny because he sends the email out to Tesla and you know how you can have like groups in your email. Mm-hmm. So it's Elon and then under it, it says two and then everybody. And I just thought that was hysterical because he's <laughs> like, I'm sending this to everybody. And it's just like within the company and you just yeah. kind of chuckle like that's exactly how his mind works. Yeah. Like, And he basically talks about direct communication so you're not wasting time. Don't give me the chain of command garbage. If you have to talk to somebody three levels up to get the job done faster, then just go to that person, ask the question, get the answer and right. leave. And it's... There's none of this butt hurt like I'm going above or behind your back to get right. the answers. Like, no, I just need stuff done right now. Right. So he... Uh, it's just interesting how 
with that mindset and knowing that that's how they kind of work, where there is no chain of command, it's just like, this is going to everybody and end of it. And we're moving on. So it's just kind of, that's awesome. It's interesting how it all ties in, but Yeah. yeah. So they, I was reading this article that said the, like, I was very interested into why SNL decided to bring him on because he's not a comedian and not an actor. Did they tell people? No. Okay. And, but like, or I'm I, sorry, did they tell people why they wanted him on? No. Okay. So or at least I don't think so. I didn't look too, too much into it, Yeah. but I did see that their ratings went up for this past week, 30%. So do you think that, I mean, obviously it's a conscious decision to bring him on, but do you think that that was the motive to get viewers back? Because SNL, like you and I just talked about, has been declining for the past year, two years. Oh yeah. So do you think that their move to do that was bring somebody on that is polar he's not even polarizing i don't know why the people even hate him why do people hate him i don't think what i think they did and it's not because it's someone that's polarized i can see where you are going with that yeah. but i just feel like they grab someone neutral that's not political he comes out as being apolitical and he's just it's elon musk mm-hmm. like everybody knows him everybody's interested in where he's at if he talks about going public or bringing in Bitcoin to be used to buy one of his vehicles, then he'll accept it and changes the stock market with these right. random sentences. He's been obviously Joe Rogan's podcast has now taken a turn where it's like being referenced in other comedic standups, books, movies. It's just strange. So was our podcast too. I don't know if you knew that. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that whole dynamic is weird, and I think they brought him on because they needed help in ratings in general, right. and that's probably the fastest way to do it because every age range is interested in Elon. I guess I'm going to take a sip of this <laughs> mysterious fluid now. <laughs> Drink your juice. It smells like... It's a very unique smell. It tastes the ending note of it tastes like fluoride. What is this? So, oh god, what do you think it is? Do you have any guess at all? A distillate. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you said we weren't going to have this on ever. Yes, we, we, I so, know. We, so we have a new studio space, and we're going to give our first, like, D? Yeah. What are you doing? Because we haven't. We haven't, like, I was, we said that we were going to be more strict, which we are. We are, but we haven't had bad booze until, I get it. I don't like it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> oh, my God. This tastes horrid. Yeah. We'll get into it. But, Yes. This is not America's good. finest. My ass. I don't. <laughs> this is just not. Okay, so put your bias. Put I, your biases aside. I don't like this. Would you like it if you weren't such a whiskey fan? Like, don't even think of this as whiskey. Like, what if you mix this with Dr. Pepper? Do you think this would be good? No. Really? No. I think this would be good with Dr. Pepper. You know those, like, you wouldn't taste this with Dr. Pepper because this is all black cherry. You know those memes where they're like, how you enjoy this, whatever, fill in the blank, and then they just show them putting it in the garbage? (laughs) That's literally what this is. It's like the vegan non-meat bacon that they give to Ron Swanson. Yes, please. I'll have another. (laughs) Another, please. There's actually oil content to this as well. Look at it on the glass. Why are you... I'm most likely not finishing this. Well, that's why I didn't want to tell you what it was because I wanted your initial reaction without telling you. Yeah, I would have went in the house and grabbed something else. Is what I would have done. <laughs> I can't. Because we have two <laughs> three clear liquid products that are whiskey that we have in our presence. So I wanted to know your reaction before I brought this out because it's... if that was your we have also St. Lawrence their moonshine so that's what I thought that you were going to go as, but I wanted your reaction because I know that you didn't like this, and I wanted it to be as authentic as possible. So, yes, we are drinking today, and we'll get into it in the whiskey rating section. This is Stillhouse Americans, America's Finest. It's their spiced cherry whiskey. So, like we were talking about, it can't actually be considered whiskey because it, in order for it to be considered whiskey, it has to be at least 80 proof. But what this is is it is 
considered a flavored whiskey product. That's how they can get away with it. That's how Cask and Crew, again, we've done them multiple times. They can get away with their flavored whiskey products because for American whiskey and American bourbon, you're not allowed to add any flavoring. You're only allowed to add flavoring for Canadian products, not American products to consider it whiskey. So if you're going to add a black cherry, they have other flavors too. They have a peach tea flavor uh, and a mint chocolate flavor, which – None of which I'm ever eating <laughs> ever. This, well, you wouldn't be eating it. You would be drinking it. <laughs> this legitimately took the moisture in my lips and sucked it down my throat <laughs> with the rest of this atrocious fluid, and it makes you want nothing but – some hearty food and water to just get back what you lost. What are we doing? We're going to rate this thing in a little bit. Let's do it. No, not yet. <laughs> but yeah, so back to our original point with SNL. So you don't, or you do think that it was a conscious decision to increase views because he's just a. I think it was a business decision because he's a magnet for attention and he's like the king of clickbait. It's like Elon Musk is going to be on today. They'll at least have someone watch for 10, 15 minutes to see what it's like. And then if they don't like it, they'll leave. But it's a high probability that it would retain attention longer than the past five years of SNL. Because yeah. even before 45, it was just declining. Yeah. I mean, the writing change, it just isn't, <clears throat> I don't know, it's not what it was with like Celebrity Jeopardy and the the glory days right so what do you think what would be your thought process on the next person to go on snl that yeah. isn't a comedian or an actor who do you think it would be it's a great question yeah um have they ever had a president host they've had michelle obama host i think right but did barack ever host no i thought he did didn't he did he i don't know again i don't really pay attention to it so i have zero idea um i mean maybe Bezos? I was going to say Bill oh, Gates. Cool. I was going to say Bill Gates, but he's a little tied up at the moment. Yeah. You know, with, <laughs> he's got some things to take care of in court. <laughs> what do you think happened there? There's reports that it was tied to his connection to Epstein. Oh, okay. And because she, she was against she it. She actually wanted to file a divorce in 2019, was it? Did I hear? So this was a long time coming. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I believe it was because of I mean, the report was it was because his relations that were tied to Epstein and she was totally against it. Um, I found out in that same report when that whole thing went out, cause I read the article, she worked for Microsoft as an employee and then they ended up getting married. Like he married one of his own employees. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know, know that, that. Yeah. but that was years and years ago. And then I guess they can't, um, they can't grow together anymore was the reason for the divorce. Like the PC yeah, reason. Cause they're like 90 years old. Well, they've been what together kind for of a super growing long time. Are they going to be doing? Yeah, I don't. But that's not a really good message to throw out be, to married couples. Oh, nailed it. That's not a very good message to throw out to married couples. You know, because Is your they're lid on. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. We're good. I'm just putting it back just up. Just soak in the carpet. Yeah, I'm just putting it back upright with my feet. Don't worry about it. Oh uh, so my water fell for everybody. My water broke actually. So <laughs> do you? But that's like not a very good message <laughs> to give to. Yeah, to give to. The American public is like, we've been together for so long, we can't grow any. Like, it's gone. Like, that's just marriage, I feel like, won't it? Like, if you hit the 50-year mark, it's not like you guys are surprising each other anymore. You could be. Oh, my God, stop it. L dude, I'm- What do you I'm, mean you could be? I'm a hopeless romantic, man. Like, If I you're feel 80, like how are you going to surprise Colleen? By bringing something back that you did 20, 30 years ago in your marriage. But that's not a surprise. That's it is, same... because it's you haven't done it in 20, 30 well, years. Well, you're a piece of shit if you haven't well, done it in 20, 30 years. No, but think about all the things that you do. I do the same thing every day. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I don't, dude, I don't know what it is. I don't know why- but I will tell you, and this isn't like a go me or whatever. I just, my parents got divorced when I was two, right? So I come from a broken home. My neighbors come from a broken home. My friends come from broken homes. Literally everyone I know comes from a broken house. And I don't know Are if you it's attracting because, these people. No, I just, I mean, we're, we're Irish. We're from South Buffalo. It's just one of those things. <laughs> so, you know, if it wasn't my house getting a divorce, it was the neighbors. And that's just how it was down the whole block. But I always try to do things that I saw my parents not do for each other. So, and it, you know, this is why I typically get mistaken for being a homosexual and like 
in literal terms. Like people ask me that don't really know me, like, mm. are you sure? And it's just like an <laughs> ongoing joke, but it's really just because I'm doing the things for my relationship that weren't occurring when I was growing up. So gotcha. I'll randomly go to Wegmans and, or, you know, no free shout outs, but I'll, I'll go to a <laughs> local grocery store and I'll pick up the few things that I need personally that I don't expect Colleen to ever buy. You know, like deodorant, right. body wash, a loofah, like all these crazy things. And then I'll swing over and I'll grab a card for – that means absolutely nothing. It's just like a thank you card. And then I'll just personally write a note to her for that card and then get her flowers. And it'll just be a Tuesday. And then she'll come home from work and then it'll just be there. And it's – for no reason, no occasion – there's nothing special behind it, but it's just like, hey, reminder, I love you. Let's move on. Please make dinner because I don't want to burn the house down. Let's move like, on. <laughs> yeah, but like those small things I didn't see growing up. So I try to relate that into my relationship to actually benefit my house so that when I have a kid, they're not getting hit with those messages from people that they look up to right. or whatever and then get confused or misconstrued. Like if I can maintain some sense of order, law and order, then <laughs> – it, and, it, and it would benefit my house and my potential kids and future kids, then yeah, you know, like I will, you know, lead by example is something that I've always strived for in and outside of the army too. So it's just something that you can easily do. Dun dun. But uh, like, I mean, do you write notes? Do you ever just like. Oh yeah. We have a little scratch pad on the fridge that is one of those like erased ones. Okay. Like you press the button and everything erases and we'll write notes to each other there. Yeah. But like even that. So, okay. Let's say you do that. But then 50 years from now, you've been doing this for 50 years. It's not like, sure, it's still appreciated, but it's not exciting. You've been doing it for 50 years. I think it turns the tide, though. You, did you ever see those then stories? Then you stop doing it. Then you surprise her by stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever see those stories of the married couples that um, say, like, one spouse dies before the other? And then, he like, say it's the Jesus, wife. Jesus, let's turn deep. Well, and whatever, it's life. So the, the wife passes before the husband, but then the husband has flowers sent to her grave, mm -hmm. like, for the, you know, 15 years. He's only got, like, two years left, right? But, like, right. for 15 years, the flowers will always show up in the grave, like, those kind of things. I th Because he did that for every Friday for, you know, 50 years or however long they were married until she got, like, stage four or some craziness. So, like, that kind of stuff, I think it kind of turns to a point where it's, like, that's actually adorable that yeah. he's actually shown that dedication. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, what the wife did to deserve all that, but that's a different <laughs> conversation. But, yeah. I mean, but it sucks, too, because if a guy does that and it's never discussed and it's never talked about, um, it's 50-50. It's Every relationship, whether it's guy-guy, girl-girl, guy-girl, or – you know, undecided, undecided, how, you know, whatever to fit, whatever the relationship, <laughs> then you have, you have it both ways. If the other partner is putting in that much effort, then so should the other partner. So sure. for example, I mean, you saw it on my story, like I, I hope anyways, but maybe didn't, I don't know. We Probably see each not. other all the time, you yeah, know, but I try to stay away from your Instagram as much as possible. Tr same. So we've, <laughs> we've been on the, we've been working on this for like a month and then two weeks we're literally like well let's bang this out so we can just enjoy it mm -hmm. and, and then, we worked on the studio too <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's right so then so then we had interviews like one to two interviews a week plus episode records and then i would come home cut the grass do laundry like maintain the house inside and out one day, randomly, Colleen comes home, and she's got a bottle of Hartman's rye. And she's like, you worked really hard. Here you go. And I almost cried. You know, yeah. like, that was nice. Like, thank you. And, you know, mind you, she's she will let me nap for 30 minutes while she makes dinner. Like, that's that's huge. Yeah. Then she wakes me up like, hey, go eat. And then I just wake up to venison burgers. Like, that's, that's what I'm talking about. You know, oh, like, yeah. that's why we're married. But, <laughs> you know, I, it's just, it's all Do you like cooking, or do you just let her... Do she's it. no, I do. I like cooking, but she's tenfold better than I am. Yeah. And she also kind of knows like how one thing will go better with the other. And I'm just kind of like a recipe guy. That's why I like to bake because I can just follow the instructions and, sure. and be, you know, mint. But do you have your foods that you have to cook because she either doesn't like to or you're better at? But like for me, my thing, I'll always cook grilled chicken and steaks. Not grilled steaks because I don't do steaks on the grill. We've talked about it. But grilled chicken and grilled st and uh, regular steaks, I'll always do. And broccoli, asparagus, and some of those like other vegetables that are more cruciferous. Nailed it. You like that one? Uh, those are the ones that I'll cook because I just like the way that I cook them and so does she. But outside of that, she handles everything. 
Um, basically, I grill. She doesn't grill. So if she wants something grilled, then I'll grill it. Yeah. But otherwise, if if she wants something cooked a certain way, then she'll just improvise and do it. Oh, I Dude, really it's been 30 to. minutes. You know how good this audio sounds right now because it's not echoing and reverbing all over the place? It's I like know. these acoustic panels are actually meant for something. It's warm in here, too. It feels so good in Dude, here. it's so cozy. <laughs> it's so cozy. I hope people look back I and they're this. like, well, I can't wait to look back because this won't air for like two weeks, mm. which is super upsetting. But whatever. We got a backlog. Raw her grinding. <laughs> but I can't wait to look back. We're going from the basement to the unfinished garage to this. I don't even know what's next. I don't think there needs to be. A, you know what's going to be sad when we buy our next house? Mm-hmm. in the middle of the woods and have to redo all of this. Yeah, but then at that time, we're fucking huge. <laughs> I don't know why I swore. I don't really try to swear a lot on this podcast. But at that point, hopefully we're Matt, like Joe Rogan huge. And that way we can have – we've talked – dude, you're getting me all am- – let's tear this whole thing down and redo it. No, if we do – if we get to that point where you and I move out into the woods, basically, then we have a separate – structure dedicated just for podcasts. That way guests can come in and do all that stuff. Now we can actually have guests come in here because it's yeah, a, like two. It's a space now. And it's not my garage. If we brought guests in here, I wouldn't feel embarrassed. I would be proud because we've built this. Whether when it was the garage and also in the basement, did not want to bring people over to do it. But now we can. I mean we can easily set this up differently. Yes. Yeah we can. You and I can sit behind here and we can have someone like in the corner or whatever. And we still have to hang the TV. Yeah. Which is fine. We'll figure that out. We will definitely figure that out. But there's, I don't know, man. Do we even need it? The TV? Yeah. I mean, it depends. If we want to, so I got a Wi-Fi, you and I, this is just going to turn into a working session. I hope all you are okay with it, but- I got a Wi-Fi center so we can get Wi-Fi in the garage now. And if we ever wanted to do Zooms, like Zoom interviews, Mm -hmm. we can throw the person's face up here. And then you and I could have our same cameras like this and then record the screen so there's three different views going on. And then you and I can actually talk to a person on the TV screen. So that could be a situation where you would do that. But, but yeah. So I read an article the other day too. Hmm. I'm trying to think of where we could put it. It's going to be right there. It's perfect. It's right in the middle. Yeah, mounting it on that side is going to be wild. Well, um, then we get. When I'm done recording, I'm going to walk around again to get a better idea of what the other side of the wall looks like. Because, like I said, we can. I don't think we use the same TV we used. That's too big of a TV. No, it's not. No such thing. Last I checked, this was America. (laughs) It's a huge old plasma screen TV that weighs 120 pounds. So. It's not even going to work on that wall anymore. Whatever. We'll figure it out. Anyway, so I read an article the other day. This is what I was talking about the other week. What do you mean? Talk to me, Mike. Two weeks ago. Yeah, it was episode, the episode that uh, just went. 84. Was was it 84? This is 86, so two weeks ago, Mm. 86 minus two. Yeah, 84. 84. All right, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Just wanted to confirm your math. So episode 84... Where you were talking about something, and then I referenced how I'm the frugal one, yeah. and sometimes I got to get you in check. That's the prime example. That's what I was talking about. All of a sudden, you're sitting here like, we're not using that old TV. We're just going to get a new TV. Oh, yeah. That's, that's fine. Just a couple hundred bucks. No big not deal. Not even a TV. We can use my old computer monitor, mount it up there, and run HDMI cords to that. I'm not thinking we get a 4K 120 frames per second hertz refresh rate. It's just going to be a monitor. Like, oh, we don't have neither. to have anything crazy. Oh, me neither. Then I totally oh, don't want that. that light just turned off. It's Why? Good. I don't know, dude. How do I turn it on? We're still new here. Let me see. That one didn't. Maybe it died. Did Is it, it die? on an app? Yeah, it's on my app. Um, so I don't have to get up? No. Maybe it, di- maybe it died, up. though. I don't know. Could have died. I don't know, dude. You act like I built this studio with you. <laughs> Um, is it's battery? Yeah. Did you charge it? Yeah. It's brand new. We didn't use it. Oh well, yeah. Connect fail. Yeah, it's dead. Nailed it. Do you want me to go get the cord? I don't care. It's literally right there. Go ahead. All right. 
talk to the people, Mike. I Jesus still can't believe you're making me drink this. I mean, sucks to suck. <laughs> sucks to suck. With our d- cute dented doorknob. Oh, man. Yeah, we'll just fix it for next time. So that light just went out again. Still new with this. Um, but yeah, what they there's still an outlet above this drop ceiling. So what we'll do is we'll just run it, run a plug from there over to here, get some extension cords in this little soffit thing, extend it both ways, and then hardwire both of them into there. Yeah. That way they'll function off of that light switch too. So maybe that's what we do. I like that. Anyway, so. You read an article. Yeah, I read an article the other day, and I want your opinion on it. So, actors and actresses, they are put in situations where they are required to make significant body changes in a quick amount of time to fill a role. Why? Money. But, like, why not have somebody that's fatter play that role? So, for example, Mark Wahlberg. Dude is the epitome of jacked health lifestyle. He wakes up at 3 a.m. to work out at the gym every morning at his own home gym, so it's easier for him. But he is tasked to play a role of an overweight man. So he's been consuming 7,000 calories a day, and he's gained 20 pounds in three weeks. That's not healthy. Regardless of how you do it, it's still like they can say that it's healthy like the way that they're doing it is healthy, but it's your body isn't meant to go through that much change in that short of a time. So why do does Hollywood basically ask people to do that if they know it's not healthy? Like even think of Christian Bale. That dude has gone from every single role, like in the fighter and the mechanic, he was basically anorexic. He looked like he was dead. And then there's roles where he's obese. Like this isn't healthy. Why does Hollywood keep doing this? Because Hollywood doesn't care. In their eyes, essentially, everybody's uh, expendable. The thing about it, though, is there's only so many actors and actresses that have the talent to do what is being demanded. Like, there is a reason why if you ask anybody, name 10 famous actresses and then 10 famous actors, you're going to get the same 10 names. From essentially everybody. Yeah. And it's because those same 10 people get every big movie. Like, it's just how it is. So, And I, I think it's because it's, I mean, they're just the most talented. So then when that comes up and a new script hits, it's like, I need you to basically do this. Mm-hmm. And then that's it. Or you don't get paid. So they're doing it based off of blood work for him. Okay. Um. So, like, they're monitoring his blood work and making sure that he's staying healthy doing this. But this is his schedule. So mornings usually start around 3 a.m. where his first breakfast is four eggs, and that's the pre-breakfast. Then he does his workout, and then around 5 to 6 o'clock, he eats another eight eggs, six strips of bacon, a cup of rice, two tablespoons of olive oil, and a protein shake. Uh, That's his weight gainer. Then three hours later, he has ground beef or ground turkey, whether it's made into a hamburger patty or meatloaf, with another cup of rice. And three hours later from that, he does roasted chicken with another cup of rice, and he'll do about a cook, uh, cup of cooked spinach and cooked beets as well. Three hours after that, he'll have a veal chop or a pork chop, and he'll do eight ounces of that with, uh, and then a small four-ounce piece of salmon with another cup of rice, olive oil, and beets again. Uh, And then he'll do another meal after that, that is eight ounces of some type of steak, eight ounces of some, another type of white fish like sea bass or halibut and load up on vegetables. And then as a nightcap, right before he goes to bed, he makes what he calls a mash, which, which consists of one cup of cooked steel cut oatmeal, two tablespoons of applesauce, two tablespoons of jelly or jam, two tablespoons of almond butter and tablespoon of molasses. He has to take that down right before he goes to bed. It's just another mass gainer that he used to put uh, on weight while he sleeps. 7,000 calories a day. That's not healthy. I, I just don't understand why they do that. Um, I, I'm with you. I still love – great conversation topic. Yours, your backlight's flickering. And great conversation starter. It's going to die too. It's just funny that you think – that I actually know the answer. Well, I'm not asking you to provide me with the answer. I'm asking you to converse with me. I know. But yeah, no, it's not healthy. It's not. You can check blood work all you want. You know damn well his heart's still struggling. That's ridiculous. It just 7,000 calories a day? 
And he's just laying around and getting fat. But he's going to gain. He's probably going to come out of this bigger than ever, like ripped after this. Because muscles need fuel to continue growing. And like, is he working ever, out though? Yeah, he's still working out. So, have you ever watched It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Like one episode. So, another so no. example of that was Mac. He's one of the main characters in it. He got extremely large during, well, not extremely large. I shouldn't say that, but he got noticeably overweight during one of the seasons to like break some sort of stigma or figure or basically prove to people that he can do it. Don't know what happened. But then the next season, he cut all that weight, but he was bulked under – like he was a big dude at, underneath. So maybe Mark Wahlberg will be the same. I don't know where I was going with this. I just heard that, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. It is. I have to get Mike's input on it. But Oh, yeah. All right. Ugh. Yeah, man. I'm taking the smallest non-actual sip of this possible. So what – Let's discuss this and then rate it so I can just move on with my life because I don't – can we start fires with this? Probably. All right. So Ugh. for all of you, again, this is Steelhouse Whiskey. This is their spiced cherry version of it, and it is – this is episode 86, and this sells for $20.95. Company background, founded by entrepreneur Brad Beckerman, Stillhouse Spirits Co. is a spirits industry disruptor and innovator in the clear whiskey category. Stillhouse Spirits Co. is committed to sustaining entrepreneurial endeavors and strives to support groundbreaking innovation across various economic sectors. This is 100% clear corn whiskey infused with flavor liqueur, and it comes in a stainless steel can. From smooth original and classic apple crisp to sweet peach tea, toasted coconut, refreshing mint chip, and fiery red hot, each Stillhouse whiskey harnesses a unique persona. Perfect for celebrated moments and everyday occasions, Stillhouse is best enjoyed as a chilled shot on the rocks to create a distinct riff on a favorite classic cocktail or in a handcrafted punch. Signature libations include the Steelhouse Mule, which is Steelhouse Original Moonshine Whiskey, Ginger Beer, and Lime, the Pineapple Express, which is Steelhouse Coconut Whiskey and Fresh Pineapple Juice, and the American Pie, which is Steelhouse Red Hot Whiskey and Apple Juice. Steelhouse Original is 80 proof, 40% ABV, uh, but the infused flavors like this are 69 proof, I'm sorry, which is 34.5 ABV. All Stillhouse products are available in 750 milliliter, 100% stainless steel cans with a suggested retail price of $27.99. With an unprecedented level of demand, Stillhouse is nearly sold out of its inaugural production. Some of the flavors include that they have available right now. Their original whiskey, black bourbon, spiced cherry, peach tea, and apple crisps. So that's it. So it is a flavored product that they're offering to the market to probably entice people to get into whiskey, similar to what Cask and Crew does. Cask and Crew offered walnut toffee, probably a little bit more appealing of flavors, I think, from Cask and Crew. I, from, from what I'm gathering from this is they are mixing clear whiskey with a liqueur to give you that taste, which I'm not a fan of. Cask and Crew put flavors in it to make it a flavored whiskey. They didn't add liqueur to it. So you're getting this weird, like, moonshiny but syrup taste. And I'm just, I'm not a fan of it. Trash. I just don't like this. So, do I want to get to rating this thing? Yeah. Okay, so Steelhouse Whiskey, label branding, what are you giving it? A B. It's very unique. Mm -hmm. Um... I was going to say the same exact thing. Yeah. So in regards to that, like it's packaging, it actually does have packaging, which is interesting and kind of cool. Um, so that, that'll that elevate, it will elevate the grade for me. Jeez, Mike, act like you're a podcast host. Um, from there, it's recognizable. Yeah. I'll give it that. But I don't, for me, it's, it looks like old school lighter fluid. Which is that the best? thing to portray when your whiskey tastes like lighter fluid too on the back end? I would rather I mean, it's an drink, honest question. I, I Yeah, I don't know. I'd rather drink kerosene. Like, that's where I'm at with this. <laughs> I've never had a fluid that pulls the moisture out of my lips. 
ever in the history of existence on Mother Earth, and it's happening with this product. So I don't know how I should react. I do understand why they say over ice or on the rocks, because Lord knows this needs help. But <laughs> but we are very stringent but and strict normally, on having things needs because we're purists. But even that, normally you put something on the rocks or you chill it when it's a high proof and you need to cut it down. This is 69 proof. There's no need to put it over ice from, from a diluting it to save your intestine standpoint. Right. You're diluting this to save your taste buds and throat standpoint <laughs> because it tastes horrific. So I agree. I think that this is a, a I B. Agree, I, agree, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. A B rating for the bottle just because of the fact that it's unique. Everything else outside of that, I, I don't like that it is in a gas can. It just doesn't fly with me. Right. So, um, so B. So B, yeah. All right. Nose. It's interesting. It smells like medicine. Yeah. I don't know why. It smells like NyQuil, like cherry NyQuil. You're getting that. Oh, God, Lee. Yeah. God, Lee. <laughs> You're getting a cinnamon, uh, black cherry, ripe fruit. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> I hope people just saw that. Oh um, my god, it's just oh, So you're make getting it stop. <laughs> you're getting a, a cinnamon, but like a very ripe black cherry on the nose. Um you're picking up a little bit of that ethanol on the back end. Um but it smells sweet. It smells sugary. It smells like a liqueur. It doesn't smell like a whiskey. I'm not getting any characteristics of a normal whiskey. It's probably sweet because it's this is 100% corn and it's not aged. So this isn't aged like whiskey is. This is basically moonshine. You're taking corn, you're distilling it down and then you're adding a liqueur to it. So it's sweet because you got that sweetness of the corn. But it also smells syrupy from that cherry, ripe fruit, cinnamon type of big red taste. If you don't chew big red, all right, I'm giving this a C. Okay, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree, I agree. All right, initial taste. <laughs> God. Oh. This is a privilege if I've ever heard of it out of you. I don't drink this type of stuff. <sighs> Okay, so initial taste. Like cough syrup. From from this, what I'm getting, and you know the taste. If you've ever drank room temperature flat Dr. Pepper, that's what this tastes like. Yeah, and it makes you close your eyes and shake your head <laughs> because it's just like, ah, just stop. Just make it stop. It's, it's – uh, People that hate seafood, make them eat seafood so they get the texture. Yeah. That. It's just not good. It's just not good. So, initial taste. D. D. D plus. D. D. <laughs> oh, it makes my eyes twitch. Oh, God. And there are tasting notes, which it's sad. And I'm not, I can't. I'm not going to keep drinking it. But well, I have to. You have to. I, oh, listen, Derek, I know what I signed up for. <laughs> I just, I'm so now mad. My that you goal make me is have to this. keep getting worse from here. <laughs> I'm going to go out and buy the worst whiskey we could possibly find. I got to do some research. This is going to be tough. All right. One of these we're actually going to love. I'm actually interested to try their actual whiskey or bourbon that is 80 proof. That is actual whiskey product because find it. I they don't really sell around here because they're sold out. It's so good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, uh, I mean, that's what their website said. But I'll try to find it because I'm not a flavored whiskey person in general. So that's why I don't like this, and neither are you. Mm -hmm. So I'd be interested to try their actual bourbon to see if it can compare to like Cask and Cruise Rye or Cask and Cruise Double Oak or something like that. Yeah, but Cask and Cruise is actually good. Well, sure, some of them are. Like their walnut toffee is good, but I wasn't a fan of their orange peel or their so, ginger. Their ginger beer I'm I'm like on the fence with. Roasted orange is fantastic as an OF yeah. because All it right, eliminates like four ingredients. Yeah, let's finish this writing here. So ending note, what are you getting for ending note? But I honestly can't even make a cocktail with this because it's just 
belongs somewhere that's not on a shelf in my house. Ending note, I'm getting the dryness and the tart because it eliminated all moisture in my mouth and forced it into my stomach. Mm -hmm. Now I want to throw up. I I honestly don't like anything about this (laughs) almost at all, (laughs) except it's label and branding. And it's enticing, and then you... You smell it, and you're like, why? And then it hits your mouth, and then sucks all the moisture yeah. out, and then it just ruins you. Ending note, I'm going with... Ending note, it's... Cherry, dissipation, no burn. Your mouth is dry. It's awkward. D minus. Yeah, so I'm still getting that flat Dr. Pepper. Like, so... You, you drink all... this, and you think something's wrong. Like, y- yeah, should because... I call the poison control people... <laughs> That the number I grew up looking All at right, on it's labels. It's not that bad. It's, it tastes to me like you're drinking flat Dr. Pepper that's been sitting for a while. Like, even if you – I haven't had pop in a very long time. I'm not a pop drinker either. Or but, soda for you weird folk. Yeah, I don't know who you are. Don't subscribe to this. The, <laughs> no, but please Please do. subscribe. So the, the flat Dr. Pepper sits on the back of your tongue, and it just annoyingly hangs there. You're getting that cherry, the black cherry taste to it, but it's like followed up with molasses or like weird, like heavy sugar content that just sticks back there and just can't go away. And it makes you think that you're dry and like you're, the rest of your mouth has to salivate and you like feel like you should keep drinking because you need to quench your thirst. But, but it this gets just worse. makes it worse. Yeah. It's like drinking salt water when you're stranded in the ocean right. and then you're just further dehydrating yourself. Um, D minus for me. D minus. I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. All right, are you ready for this? This is going to be our lowest one ever. We haven't gone this low before. How low can you go? All right, let's do it. Give me that countdown. Three, two, one. 65. 65. Yeah, I was going to say 64, but then I remembered <laughs> that we agreed to never give anybody below that, so 65. Oh. I can't, dude. It's bad. Yeah. It's just bad. I I can't do it. Now I got to go home and drink something real. <laughs> I might lick. What do you, honestly, okay, so. I might lick the passenger seat of my truck to get this taste out of my mouth. <laughs> real talk. How do you think they can fix this? Honestly, don't say throw it out, but from a critical standpoint, giving critical feedback, how do you think that they could fix this? What do you think would be better? Get rid of whatever eliminates the moisture from your mouth. So if that's an ingredient, just remove that. Um, I don't, I don't know how that happened, but it happened. I feel like I'm drinking water out of a gas can and I'm storming Iwo Jima, which I think actually <laughs> did happen. But a remarkably mellow flavor and a smooth finish makes this a truly versatile clear spirit. <laughs> They need to they need to promote their marketing manager because that person's just full of lies and they're doing a good job. America's finest. I says think, who? I think what they do, which probably goes contrary to everything that they've done, but remove the cherry liqueur and replace it with cherry extract. If you want to continue using a flavored whiskey platform, don't use the liqueur. The liqueur is adding too much sweetness to this that it's not enjoyable anymore, and uh-huh. it's drying out our mouth. Yeah. I, I would do that. All right. Yeah, I agree. All right, Mike. So let's let's round this episode out. What do we uh, round it out? Round, just round, <laughs> round it out. Okay. Uh, welcome to our new studio. We're excited <laughs> to have you moving forward. Uh, Like we said in the beginning, please subscribe if you have not. We are on Instagram and Facebook as Buffalo Happy Hour and Buffalo Happy Hour 12. Uh, The 12 is for our Instagram handle. We're still at – we're going through court in regards to getting the Buffalo Happy Hour (laughs) title, so no big deal. But uh, outside of that, we appreciate any and all support. We do have collaborations still in the work. Still in the works with Three Chord. Um, in regards to our single barrel release, if you are interested in buying a bottle, it is a limited run, looking at about 120 total bottles. Um, and yeah, drop a DM, let us know if you want one. We'll add you to our pre order spreadsheet list. And then from there, uh, you'll be notified by Addie's Wine and Spirits to pick up your bottle. So we're excited for that. Looking around uh, summer, end of summer uh, timeframe. 
and yeah, man, I'm I'm juiced up for this studio space. I'm excited to just knock out the final, final details on it and make it home and, and just keep cranking. So with this episode, this previous Friday, so if you're listening to this on Monday, last Friday, we released an interview with Cakes by Katya. Yes. She was awesome. Her cakes are fantastic. Everything that she does, she makes it her own, which is awesome. Uh, this next Friday coming up, we have an interview releasing with Hopper from Clonacilty which is an exciting interview. I'm so excited that we were able to get him when he was in from Ireland. Just a wealth of information, and his spirits were fantastic. So next week, too, with this interview, we will be reviewing some of their products. So if that's if you're excited about that or you know somebody that likes Irish whiskey, make sure to share that with them so they know when we're going to be reviewing this stuff. It will be greatly appreciated. And, yeah, that's really it. So, everybody, thank you very much for tuning in today. This has been Episode 86 of the Buffalo Happy Hour Podcast with Stillhouse Whiskey, my new favorite. Uh, (laughs) thank you all for joining please remember to drink responsibly be a good person and Michael and do not litter we're out